Hey guys, welcome back. Dream Reaver 23 here, and uh, today we're just going to go out and go do a ride, and get some miles on the bike. We're currently at about 265 miles, and uh, just going to go out and try to ride a little bit, get about 100, 150 miles put on here. We'll see how that goes. So welcome guys to the ride. This isn't going to be a big fancy ride with lots of beautiful scenery, so I do apologize for that. This is going to be mainly taking up on uh, highway routes and interstate routes, so that way we can go through and, like I said, just get some miles under the belt. I'm trying to go through and get past the uh, break-in period so I can go get the first oil change on here. I do hope that uh, the audio comes out well. This is my first test with uh, getting the lav mic in the uh, head in the helmet and uh, testing that out while riding so we shall see how it goes so now that we are out on i-25 i know that uh, a couple of you guys actually asked a few questions and uh one of you guys actually brought up a good point of making a video you know while out riding or doing whatever I was just kind of describing or, or uh, given the reasons why I went through and decided to choose the 2021 Moto Guzzi V7 850 Special uh, and also what kind of mods and stuff like that that I'm going to be doing to it in the future or that I would like to do it to it in the future. So I figured out on this uh, lovely day out for a ride, cruising at 90 on I-25, that I would... Uh, Go ahead and give you guys a run up. Actually, let me see. I can do a comparison between my uh, ow between my uh, speedometer and what Calico Motors or whatever is this thing is called is, is saying we're doing. So right now it says we're doing 85, and on the Cali Moto it says we're doing 80. So looks like at about this speed it's about five degrees off. Or five miles per hour off which makes sense so what got me to choose the uh, 2021 Moto Guzzi V7 850 special versus all the other bikes that are out there right there's a whole bunch of manufacturers there's a whole bunch of uh, motorcycles different styles and everything like that that are out there on the market nowadays and uh, what got me to choose this one there's a lot of different manufacturers out there a lot of different really good looking bikes out there um, but for me the bottom line is I wanted to go through and kind of find the style that I really enjoyed looking at as well as as riding on right so uh, different bikes have different... Don't you do it. Different bikes, bikes have different uh, looks and everything like that to them, obviously. And, uh, you know, your big major ones are sport bikes, cruisers, bobbers, baggers, cafe racers, and retro sports. And then you have, obviously, your dirt bikes and everything like that. But... For uh, out there on, uh, on cruising and stuff like that, for getting out there on the open road, for me it was one of those things that I, my uh, last bike was a 1981 Honda CB750C, so it was already kind of a cruiser build. And while I did enjoy the bike, it was a great fun bike to uh, ride. There was a lot of stuff that I wanted more modernized obviously than, uh, than the world on that bike and that one is uh, being that it was a 40 year old you know 81 cb 750 c it's uh it it was sort of like that ujm style they just went through and did a uh, version of it that was a bit more cruisery and so it didn't have a whole lot of the the sport look or whatever to it so i rode a bunch of different bikes and uh test rode a bunch of bikes and sat on a bunch of bikes and in going through all that process I'm like looking at all these different ones the only ones that seem to really have a pull on me for uh, 
looks was the retro sports ones like the Moto Guzzi series or uh, the Triumphs. I did like the Triumph bikes, uh, the T100, uh, T100s, T120s. I really liked the Street, uh, the Street Twin, and the v and the Speed Twin. So I started looking at those and, and going around and specifically going out and, and just sitting on the bikes for like fucking 10 minutes, 15 minutes to go through and, and test them out and see how they felt. See how they felt when you sat on them. See how they felt whenever you um, would be sitting on them for a while. And I checked out the uh, W900R, uh, I think it was, I don't know. W900, the Kawasaki one, I believe. Uh, another retro sport styling and stuff like that. A bit more power. And while they were fun to kind of look at and sit on, uh, and even test ride a few of them, it was like one of those things where it's just like they didn't, they didn't fit everything that I was looking at. Because once I started looking at that, I started doing comparisons between uh, fuel economy, fuel size, like the fuel tank, because I wanted to be able to go through and take it and take it on more than just riding around in the city and then comfort for trips that are longer than just like running to go air, do errands or something like that so I started looking at uh, a lot of their uh, features like in the specs and everything like that comparing fuel tank size average fuel economy um, uh, things along those lines and seeing where they would be able to go through and kind of fit in on there and whenever I started doing that comparison, a lot of them, uh, a lot of the bikes that I was looking at were, they were city haulers. They were maybe on a full tank of gas, you might get 100 to 120 miles before you had to fill up again. And that was including like the reserve tank and stuff like that. And it's definitely not bad, I mean, in comparison to cars and stuff like that. But uh, for me, the bigger spot was that I needed something that I can go through and, and, you know, if I push it, I can go through and get 200, 200 plus because whenever you're out doing more touring type stuff, you might go a couple hundred miles between fill-ups. And I wanted to make sure that I had that capability on it. And then above that, it was one of those things to where uh, the last thing that was kind of on my list was there was a lot of these bikes that had really great power and torque but that's more of what they were aimed for was that side of it the power and torque so if you twist the throttle too hard you are definitely going through and doing a wheelie and i'm not i'm not a big wheelie person i, I don't want to go through and uh, my, my 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 i got no squid dna in me so i didn't want to uh I didn't want to go out there and, and have something to where I had to be worried about, like if I do twist the throttle too hard, I'm going to come off the wheels, lift the front up or something like that. So whenever I started doing those comparisons, that led me a lot more down the route of the Moto Guzzi's because the Moto Guzzi's had the styling that I really wanted. There was definitely that appeal right there. They had the uh, fuel economy and the size of the fuel tank that I wanted for do, to do more longer rides that were more than just in the city uh and honestly a lot of it came down to is that they had the heritage on there whenever you have a company that when i first started looking at moto a couple years ago they were almost 100 years they were like 98 years before they uh that they've been making bikes and I, that I, I was i was surprised with that i was i was that intrigued me and then once I started seeing like their V7 series, their V9s, uh, a lot of the bikes that they've done, like there's that certain style that is really just, it's a Moto Guzzi, right? It's, it's that they've, they've never really strayed away from it. They've had different bikes that have come out for different types of stuff, stuff for their racing line and stuff like that. But there's heritage in that too, being that all of them were racing bikes that they actually designed to be a part of their racing line. And so I saw that and was just really, really intrigued. The blue car, you get off my ass. And so whenever I started looking at that, that was that was one of the big appeals to me. 
Um, I actually was going to go through last year and pick up a 2020 Moto Guzzi V7 III. Uh, I don't remember which one was available up there, but it was like a more of the bronze, coppery kind of color, color to it. I believe it might have been a stone. And uh, I, I was looking and I was, I was getting really close to pulling the trigger on buying that, but then I was like, wait a second, they're about to do their 100 year anniversary. I bet you they're going to be doing something and I'd like to go through and wait to see what it is. Because one of the biggest things for me was that uh, the... The uh, 2021s, uh, or the 2020 models and previous, for the V7s, it was one of those things to where I was like, you know, I just wish they had a little bit more power in them. I didn't want, you know, something like the, you know, 98 horsepower that's on the, the, the Speed Twin or anything like that, 93 horsepower. But I wanted a little bit more, because I think at the time they were only rocking about 52 horsepower and like 40, 44 pounds of torque-ish. And so I kept telling myself, you know, if it had just a little bit more, if it had a little bit more, let me see what happens in 2021 and see what they come out with. Because my big thing was like, I bet you they're going to go through and put it up to 850cc and it would be awesome if they used the one that was on the V85TT. That motor, which in fact they ended up doing, but they ended up detuning it a bit to make sure that it would uh, go through and meet all the emission standards and all that stuff like that. Um... And I still think they did an amazing job. I would like to go through, I would love it if they were like, oh yeah, and we were actually able to squeeze an extra like 10 or 15 horsepower out of it. But in that same sense, it doesn't need it. It's, 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 it's not a speed bike. If you, want a, if you want a speed bike, you go get a sport bike or you go through and get like a, a rocket or something like that. But when it, whenever it came down to it, that's really what I was waiting for. And there was a whole lot of press that was saying that Oh yeah, the 2021s are going to be coming out, and they're you know it's another V7 III in the same line as the uh, the the previous year, so they weren't changing anything. And I was actually getting kind of upset because a lot of the bikes that I was looking at were were disappearing off the showroom floor because people were just like around December they were just like yeah well I'll just grab one of these then. And the end of December they announced it that the 2021 Moto Guzzi V7 it was going to be an 850 cc bike. And they had some pictures up for it and so i was like super freaking excited because i saw they had that blue or this blue right here and they had uh they basically for the first first two months or something like that they only really showed the blue bike uh for the special and then they had the uh orange and the black one for uh the the stone and i just I, the the stone didn't really appeal to me because I saw the special and I was I was in love with the special. So I waited about a week to go through and think it over and I was talking with the wife about it and she said, baby, if you want that, you know, that's a gorgeous bike. Uh, if you want it, you know, do what you gotta do. See what, need, see what you need to do. I called over to Erico Motors in Denver, which is my uh, Moto Guzzi dealer over here. And I said, hey, uh, do you have any word about the 2021 V7 850s and he's like yeah I got it but you know this much whatever I was like cool I want to go through and put a deposit down uh, to reserve one I want it in blue the special and he's like cool and that was like the first week of January or something like that fast forward fast forward fast forward I start seeing like uh, in like end of March I start seeing like press release rides uh, people that were out there and there was some mixed reviews right there were some people that were just like yeah it's still just it's not fast enough it's you know it doesn't have enough tech on it it doesn't have this it doesn't have that you know I wish it was this and then you start reading some more about the people that are doing the interviews and or are, 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 are these reviews of it like these journalists photo uh, uh, motorcycle journalists and a lot of them are sport bike riders or they're cruiser riders and so the, they were doing a comparison not a bit to the previous generations of Moto Guzzi's in a lot of times and I won't say all of them there were some really good reviews that were out there uh, that were basing it off of previous generations as opposed to basing it off of you know uh, uh, a speed twin or you know the W900R because those are sport bikes that have a retro look to it they're not retro sports uh, at least in my opinion but I digress. So they were going through and they were showing these, uh, doing these reviews and they were, some of them were just like tearing it up because it wasn't this other bike. And some of them were 
giving it good reviews. They were going through and saying, yeah, no, it's comfortable, it's good, it's good, it's good, except for it's not fast at all, it's not powerful enough, they could have gone through and given it, you know, more horsepower, they could have done this, because they still wanted to go through and have it to where it was a faster, more powerful bike. But in that same sense, for me, it was one of those things where it's just like, I'm not looking for the most powerful bike out there. I'm not looking for a sport bike. If I wanted a sport bike, I would go and get a sport bike. You know, plain and simple. CBR 600 or something like that. Like, that's what I would do if I wanted to go through and have a sport bike. And uh, so I, I kept going through, and then I found uh, David Berman, which is a YouTube channel. He is a gentleman out of uh, the UK, and he got his, and he was going through and doing videos of him riding, and I was just like, yes, you know, here's somebody that's an owner of it, not a, uh, you know, a magazine, a motorcycle journalist or anything like that, like a magazine journalist. I guess they're just called journalists, but you know, an automotive journalist. And uh, so I started watching some of his, and he put up a couple videos, and was just kind of like answering some questions about it, and you could be able to hear the sound, and see how it rides and from him as an owner of it it was something that I re respected a lot more and so I was like yes cool and at this point in time I've already been like almost four months with having the deposit down because this was coming to like first or second week of April and uh, so I was I was getting antsy I wanted I'm, I wanted my bike <laughs> basically uh, yeah then whenever the bike did finally come in uh, was able to go through and pick it up. I picked it up on a Thursday and by the like Thursday in the afternoon whenever I left between that time and Saturday I put like 200 and something right at 200 miles on it and I was like oh, okay cool <laughs> and it was one of those things where I just kind of like fell in love with the bike. The bike was it ran really well. It ran really smooth. I actually did buy it uh, like deposit and everything like that. I guess you can quote unquote say sight unseen I saw the pictures and stuff like that on, on, you know, all my research and everything that I was doing, but I didn't test ride the bike. Um, I had I had ridden the uh, 2020 version of the V7, and they did do some changes, but and I it was one of those things, like, I wanted to go and, and like, I knew that this was going to be my bike. It wasn't one of those things where, and some people can call that a dumb move, but it wasn't one of those things to where I was like, you know, if it doesn't fit, you know, then uh, I, I'm just not going to get it. Like, I wanted this bike. So I didn't leave myself a choice of going through and, and, well, this one rides a little bit better or, you know, whatever. I just wanted to ride the bike. I wanted this one right here. Um, so I picked it up, did all my financing and everything like that, rode it home, and I've, I've loved it ever since. It's one of those things, which, granted, it's only been like two weeks Two weeks? Yeah, a little over two weeks. Two weeks and one day that I've had the bike. And uh, I just, I wanted this style. Like, I wanted this feel. I wanted all of this. And I want you to hurry up and move past semi if you're going to pass. So, that is the reason why I ended up going through and picking, uh, getting this bike. Or, I guess, the, re the way I did get this bike. For the reasons why I chose this one over the Stone or... Um, any of the other bikes out there, it really comes down to appeal. For me, the Stone, it, while it is a more modern looking bike and it looks good, it's one of those things that for me, it's all about that appeal. It's the reason why some people do not like this bike style at all, but instead love sport bikes. They like the Kawasaki Ninjas or, you know, the some people like the Husqvarna's or some people like the, uh, the adventure bikes kind of things, you know. Everybody has their own t appeal for it. For me on this one, it was one of those things that I would, instead of the single LED or LCD gauge and stuff like that, I like the dual analog. That's my cup of tea. Like I like the dual analog style. Um, I had it on my 81 CV 750C. It was a dual analog, granted with a lot more RPMs. Um, and then the uh, things like the I didn't like the daytime running light that was on the uh, on the stone, that eagle that goes across the front of it. I, I it just I can see how it has its appeal, but for me, it's one of those things that I just don't like the style of that. I like more of a classic-looking bike. I'm not huge on a ton of chrome, but 
I liked the minimal amount that was on here. You have the exhausts, you have these little things on the side of the uh, handlebars, and then you have the handlebar. Like that's, it's not fully blacked out like a lot of other stuff is. But the main part that you see on here is the exhaust. Nice, perfect, awesome. I'm good with that. It's not over the top. It's not everything on it, chrome or anything like that. It's not looking like a fucking West Coast choppers kind of thing. But it's done really well. I thought it was done tastefully for the amount. And I was good with that. So yeah, like it for me, like I said, it's 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 a bit of just the appeal of this bike versus the stone. And it's not knocking anybody that likes the stone over the special. I see a lot of people in the forums that are just like, man, I can't stand that chrome or what's that thing on the back seat? <laughs> The little uh, bar that's back there, which turns out is really great for going through and strapping a cargo net to. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's it's just one of those. The bike works really well for me. So that's why I chose this one over the stone. I would like to go through and. Uh, see what more accessories they do have that they come out with. Uh, I was looking at, uh, so I guess in the side of it of like what I plan on doing in the future. Uh, so I was looking at doing the uh, Dart fly screen, either the Classic uh, or the Marlin. Uh, the Prawn I think is just too short to actually do anything that's effective. So for the price point it was one of the things where I was looking, like I said, at the Classic or the Marlin on there. Um, but when I started looking further into it, one of the biggest things that I saw was a lot of people were going through and saying is like, yes, it does, does move a lot of the wind off your chest, but it puts it to where all that wind goes right onto your helmet. <laughs> and so you get a lot of buffeting and like, uh, buffeted, buffeting air at your helmet level and it makes a lot noisier in your helmet. So that turned me off, uh, honestly, a lot to going and getting one of those and it's one of those things like at 130 bucks it's a price point to where I can't justify going through and spending it to, to test it out do you know what I mean so I moved away from that and uh, that and yet one of the other reasons I mean I was just going 8590 on the interstate there's not a whole lot uh, like the wind is not bad like the the headlight and the gauges and stuff like that how they have that design on this bike actually does a really great job of moving that air around you and keeping it to where you have clean air and stuff like that so i did go through and order the mistral exhaust the short pipes and so when those do come in i will be doing a uh, comparison video of the before and after with uh, 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 sound meter on there to be able to go through and kind of tell you what they show you what they sound like as opposed to just the sound difference on on the video right now they are out of stock so I don't know when they will be coming in so we'll just have to see how that goes so yeah, once I get in, once I get in the Mistral uh, exhaust, uh, I definitely will be doing a video on that one just so you guys can actually see and hear how it sounds. I did just go with the uh, polished one, so it's going to match the exhaust that's on here now. Uh, the only thing that does make me nervous is uh, two parts. One, making sure that that doesn't go through and you know ruin anything with the warranty from Moto Guzzi. It's not a huge warranty. It's only two years, but still want to make sure that that doesn't get ruined. And two is uh, you lose access to the heat, uh, the, the heat guards, the heat shield for the exhaust. And so the bike with a 30.7 inch seat height, it makes it to where I'm not on my tiptoes, but I'm on like the balls of my feet. Like I can't flat foot it on this bike because I'm only 5'9", 5'10", right in there. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's, uh, not having those heat shields, uh, it does make me a little nervous. I know for the V9, Mistral actually does make, like, for the V9, uh, Mistral exhaust, they actually do make heat shields that you can order, but I don't know, that I didn't see any on the site for, uh, the V7 850 ones. So if I remember correctly, there is a 
little shopping center over on the other side of I-25. It's got some uh, good food and treats. It's called Interspecies Erotica, fucko. Ooh, a Jimmy Jones. All right, guys, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up there. That is uh, right at an hour. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap that one up. Grab me about to eat and uh, ride home. If anything interesting, interesting happens on the ride home, I'm sure you guys will uh, see that one on there. But I'm going to go through and get this home, edit it down, see how the audio came out. Hopefully the audio came out well. Hopefully the different video stuff came out well. But until next time, this is Dream River 23 reminding you to ride happy. I love you all, and I will see you all later. Bye, guys.